Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be applying a honeycomb smoke wrap made by Lux to the back of our 2020 Dodge Challenger. And Lux sent it in this really nice packaging. It was a very heavy duty cardboard tube packaging that had little indentions on the end that I literally had to cut to get into. It was very, very great packaging came rolled up inside of there and came with all the little goodies and all the things that you're going to need to apply it come with an exacto blade and inside there was a package and the package had a decal inside of it their cleaning solution their prep work their prep solution and a uh, microfiber cloth and a squeegee to help flatten things out and get out air bubbles and just help you work the material. It was pliable, but yet firm. Now this was a large amount of material that we ordered and you can actually order this in different sizes. The material that we ordered, I felt was enough to cover the two sides of the, um, the light but it does come as one big piece in this particular kit and you can see the honeycomb there it's a smoke honeycomb and uh, it's i think this is the mid smoke so the first thing i decided to do was that i was going to roll it out and place something on top of it to kind of help get the roll out of it to get that curvature out of it so I decided I'm working here inside of my um, kitchen <laughs> on the island in my kitchen and I had went outside and measured how long each side needed to be because what I was basically going to do was cut it into four pieces because the back taillights of a Challenger they are four pieces there's outside, two outsides, and two insides. And the two outsides are actually part of the car. And the two insides are actually part of the trunk. So what I wanted to do was cut it into four pieces that were long enough to cover. And the pieces, are, the, the pieces on the inside and on the outside are the same width and the same height. So basically needed to cut four identical pieces. The cool thing about their backing is that it has marks on the back of it that you can, it has lines and to, so you can cut straight lines, you can measure to lines. So what I'm doing here is just laying it out to get that curvature out of it. And then I'm just going to place something on top of it to help hold it flat. You can see that amazing honeycomb pattern in the material there. I had went outside and measured the lights. I started measuring that out to make sure that it was going to be as wide as I needed it to be and if it was going to be as tall as I needed it to be. And it was easily going to be as wide as I needed it to be and it was definitely going to be as tall as I needed it to be. I actually had enough material left over to cover my rear reflectors in the honeycomb material too and I'll show that later in the video. So what I'm doing during this part is I'm figuring out that okay this is the height that I need it to be. So from this edge to that line and then from that line to the other edge is where I need to cut. So first thing that I was going to do was I was going to cut for height before I cut for width. And this is the first time I've ever done anything like this as far as having to cut the material myself and make sure that it was cut in a proper fashion where I didn't have um, too little material. I wasn't concerned with having too much and if I would have had waste, which I do have I did have waste even though I had enough to do other things, I just didn't want to cut something too short. So measure twice, cut once, they always say. So at this point in time, I had determined that basically I was uh, safe to cut up that center line right there. 
I figured there's a few of you out there that's probably going to be as hesitant that I am as I am if you've never done this before. If you know all about this part, you can just skip to the next section where I go out to uh, start applying. But if you are wanting to see exactly how this needs to be cut and the time I took to cut it and make sure it was cut right, you're welcome to just watch right along. <laughs> it's funny watching this now. It's funny looking back now that I've done this. I'm going to probably measure for the 15,000th time. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready to cut. Here we go. I ain't going back now. And I just cut straight down that line. Pretty much watching this in real time with me at this point. We're about 10 minutes in. Now this won't be real time the whole way. And I didn't later in the video. I don't show doing every single light. And at some point in time, my camera dies. And so, but I tried to give you guys the best representation of what it takes to do this job. So now at this point, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to split this evenly because this will represent one side. And once again, I want to say that this is more material than you will need. I measured a few times and then I cut and I ended up with four pieces that you see here. And those are my four pieces that I'm going to use for the tail lights. And then I put something on top of them to help kind of weigh them down to help kind of flatten them out a little bit and i left that there for just a little bit and then we move outside it's got about an inch over either way so it's 13 inches 13 inches wide and you follow the crevice so you have an inch then you follow along to there come up over and so that's 13 there so if you want to give yourself a little bit more you can do 14 inches and then you start down here come over down into the valley back up over and then come about an inch off of that and that's about six inches and these are though this one and the one beside it are the same size I, I measured they're the same size so you're going to be looking at about 14 inches this way and about what did I say six six inches the other way which is what I've cut these into and just because of the way that the strip is you're going to end up with one bigger than the other because what I did this is the cut that came from the factory I wanted to cut along a line so I went with me cutting along a line one of them ended up being about an inch, maybe about three quarters of an inch bigger than the other ones this way. But I cut them both the same, so I'll probably start with, since it's going to be the first one I'm going to do, I'll probably start with one of the smaller pieces, the piece that's a little smaller. You see it's about an inch smaller up and down. So I'll probably start with this smaller piece and... Uh, and, and use the larger pieces as I as I get more comfortable. I have, I have a whenever you whenever you do this next one, so I'm gonna start with my honeycomb at the bottom. And when you do the next one, you want the pattern to try to line up as much as possible um, to where there you don't have one like this and then one like this. You want the pattern to be as much lined up horizontally as you possibly can. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it with the stuff that they provide. They give you a microfiber cloth with every single one of them. Even this is the microfiber cloth from my old, the, the, uh, the side marker blackouts. But with the new one, they sent me another one and they send you another sticker to go under your hood and, um, or to go, you know, wherever. You basically get this every time you order, which is really cool. They send you stuff, they send you more. And this is prep, this is, um, basically alcohol and water and it doesn't mess with any ceramics or anything like that but it just basically is going to get wax and debris and I can just feel this and we keep our car pretty clean but I can just feel the grime on this so um, you want your uh, you want your uh, this plastic to almost squeak when you run your finger across it so you want to clean it up really good and you have to do it for all of them but they recommend doing it one at a time 
and just cleaning this really good until you get it clean the edges too because this is going to come along up along the edges it's going to come you they recommend cleaning this whole piece this whole fixture because you want the um you want the seal the the adhesive that is on it to stick to plastic not to grime and dirt Still feels a little grimy. If you got to keep, you got to keep going, keep going. I may fast forward and, but you got to keep clean until it's clean. Yeah, my finger squeaked. Alright, so I'm just going to go and tell you, this is the first time I've ever done this. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Just so you get better detail. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this. I have done the, the side markers, but the side markers were already pre-cut. So this is not pre-cut, it comes in a big sheet, like I showed earlier. And so, I've never done anything like this before, so uh, they say this material is very forgiving. They say that you can peel it off and put it back on as you need to. Um, keep heating it up as you need to. If you get wrinkles, it'll come out if you work on it. So we will see um, how well that, that goes. Um, I don't have extra, so this is basically it. Uh, this is the, you know, and this kit's about $50, so it's not a huge amount of money, um, but it's not really something that, uh, you know, it's not really something that you want to just waste money on either. So um, I'm going to uh, gonna go ahead and start, and I think what I'm going to do is since I'm going to have right here in this area, I'll zoom in a little bit where you can see real close. Right in this area right here where you see where the light comes up over the lip, it's red and then it turns black. And you're going to go on past that. You're going to put the tape down, the, uh, the cutting tape. You're going to put it down and you're going to put it down around where the top lip comes. It turns red, then it turns black, and then it comes over and it just kind of flattens out just right there before it starts going up like this. You're going to put your cutting tape right there around this side and make sure that it's down. And then whenever we start putting our piece in, we start putting the piece in. You see on this one, on the pattern down here at the bottom, I don't know how well you can see, but it's a little bit of a half of a honeycomb and then it starts a full one. What I'm going to try to do is put the black of that bottom part of that first honeycomb where it starts a honeycomb I'm gonna to try to start it right at about where the light is gonna start turning uh, red and I'm gonna to try to get it as exact as possible all the way across um, I know that I may not get it exact as possible because um, you know this isn't my day job <laughs> uh, but I'm just a, a newbie enthusiast I'm doing some stuff for myself on my car and uh, hopefully I don't mess it up too much. So we're going to start with this cutter. Cutter wire. It's called Finish Line Knifeless Tape. I'll zoom out a little bit. As you can see there. This is called Finish Line Knifeless Tape. It's made by 3M. And this is called a trial size, but it's 32 feet. So it's 
more than I need. It says to begin, I'll lead, lead a, read a little bit about the instructions. Um, it says to begin with six to eight inches of tape before and after where the graphic will be cut. Lay down the knifeless tape, apply the film over the tape. So, yeah, you want, because you want something that you can start to pull out and, and lead across. Um, fold the back of the tape over itself approximately three inches. Press the thumb on the folded, covering at least a half inch of the tape. Then firmly grasp the end of the tape with your thumb and index finger with the two thumbs about a half inch apart. Bring, bring thumbs together and give tape a quick snap, breaking the carrier tape and exposing the filament. Pull the line back not upward stopping before the edge of the graphic so yeah you don't pull it up you pull it back over itself so we'll we'll talk about that when we get to the end when we are um, cutting the graphic they give you a little squeegee also to squeegee it down I guess they give you a squeegee too there all right so let's give this a shot see how much damage we can do At 32 feet sounds like a lot, but when I'm going to be doing four of these things, it said don't stretch it. Don't stretch it. Make sure that it's down firmly. Try not to twist it, which going around these curves can be probably a little bit of a pain in the butt. Trying to keep it equally back going around this corner. Hopefully my head isn't in the way, or my hands isn't in the way, and if they are, I'm sorry. They suggest that you do this in the shade. Shouldn't do it in the sun. You don't want your materials to be too hot. And I know I'm probably getting my head in the way, but I need to get down here to see this. I'm going to go ahead and stretch this on out. And by stretch, I don't mean stretch. I mean lay it out. All right. So there's my line. They say to take this and stretch it, pull it back out of the way. So I'm going to pull it back this way. And give me some room over here. And pull it back this way. Out of the way. I got a little wrinkle right there and right there where you make those hard curves, but I don't think, I don't know of a way to, uh, I don't know of a way to avoid that. All right. Now what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to show you how to do all four of these because basically the concept is the same. This one is the same as the one on the left. This is the right side, this is the passenger side, outside. And the ones that's up on the trunk that would be right here, they're just these 
reversed. So whatever concept, whatever, whatever techniques that you end up using um, to do one, you can end up, you can use to do all of them. And so I'm not going to show me, this video is not going to be me doing every one of these. That would be boring. It's just going to be me doing one and me talking through what's going on in my head and what's going on with um, how I'm doing getting getting this done and how good of a job that I do at it, how good it looks when I end up being done with it. So it's not going to be something that I'm going to do. I'll show a video doing all four. Um, there are probably videos out there showing all four, but if you can do the one, if you can do one this way, uh, you, the concept can work the same for all four of them. And if it doesn't, then I'll mention that at the end of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this one. Okay. So I have my four pieces. Like I said, I'm going to talk, start with my one of my smallest of the pieces. Go ahead and start with it. And like I said, where I cut it, there is it starts right up almost on one of the the um, honeycombs, but on the other one, there's a little bit of a partial one, and that is the one that I'm going to start with because I want that to kind of go over the la over the the black where you won't be able to see it very well and then over the and then start a honeycomb going over the red. I'm going to try to get that honeycomb equal from here to here before it starts to curve. That's what that's my goal is to try to get it equal. Now, I've seen different techniques where people start in the middle and then work their way out um, and then I've seen where people start at the bottom and work their way across going this way. Since I'm going to be doing a, a, a pattern, and I want that pattern in a certain place, this is the way that I'm going to do it, starting from the bottom and working my way up. Um, so I'm not going to start from the center. I don't need, oh, I may need to mention that a tool that you will need is you'll need like a, a, an air gun. I've seen some people use propane torches, acetylene torches. Um, but I'm going to use a Wagner air gun. It has a uh, low setting and a high setting. And uh, they said you can also use a uh, hair dryer on high. But um, they, they recommend using something like this. Because you want to, at some point in time, you need to get this up to 200 degrees. You need to get this material up to 200 degrees. So, but yeah, you do, you do need to have something like this as well. All right, here we go. Peeling the paper, peeling it off the paper. No turning back now. It's very thick. It's very thick material, thicker than I realized it would be. And of course the wind starts blowing. As Soon as I go to get started, the wind starts blowing. And it's kind of folding over on itself, so I am gonna kind of Get it out of my way a little bit. It's kind of hard to see. Somebody told me um, if you turn your tail lights on that um, that can help lining up. So, pro tip, turn your tail lights on before you peel the piece of paper off.
now when you get into this corner over here, we get into corners and there's little, those are little, there's some little marks that are um, like um, molding marks. So when you get into the corner over here, you usually have to do start applying some heat to get the um, to get it to give a little bit, and you don't want it sticking too much to areas that you're not ready to fully work in yet. So I'm going to have to apply some heat over here in this corner. you really can't see what I'm doing but basically what I'm doing is I'm trying I'm heating this up and then I'm keeping this I'm um, trying to get it and in, mold it into the corners and and when I run into a little wrinkle I pull it back to where the wrinkle goes away and then I push the wrinkle out with my thumb is a tighter corner than the bottom corner so it's a little bit more of a it's a little bit more of a stickler to get little air wrinkles out of
this point in time, my camera died. And I did not realize my camera had died until I had actually did a few more panels. <laughs> so after I got my camera charged back up, and plugged back up and charged up, I came back and talked about what you might have missed and gave my thoughts and then worked on a little bit more for you to see. Here we go. Came back. Um, basically my camera died <laughs> and uh, so here's what I ended up with on the first one and uh, I had some wrinkles this is the very first one I did I got some wrinkles right in this area here and basically what you have to do is um, when you work it down in that's not a wrinkle this isn't a wrinkle here that's just an imperfection in the uh, actual tail light right in there you kind of can see it it's right in this one too which I haven't done yet um, but what, what you have to do is I'm starting mine at the bottom because I want to be able to get a full honeycomb, uh, right in this area here and then basically end up with the same thing in the top. And I wanted this honeycomb to be like right in the middle. Um, so I started mine down at the bottom, made sure it was even kind of going, but it, you know, it kind of, you want it to be even, but at the same time, it kind of, the, the bottom's not flat. It kind of works its way up because it's bigger here, smaller here. So it's constantly getting smaller. So you, if you're perfectly straight across, because if you look down here, it's actually quite below right here. But then by the time you get over here, it's like almost on it. And um, so once you get it down in here, I wouldn't work it your way up too much up here. Just kind of start working this way and get down in these little corners here. And then when you're pulling this, what you want to do is when you're pulling it to get rid of your, uh, when you get working to get rid of your um, wrinkles, you want to pull this way and use two hands. Pull this way and this way at the same time. So pull out, straight out, and to the side because it helps to stretch that out a little bit. Now, my corner here is really stretched. I'll show you the other one. I've actually done three so far. And... Uh, when you get into these corners, it does get distended because it's not flat here. This is a, a, a more gradual curve, and this is kind of flatter at a flatter angle like this. Um, and so the apex, the, the circumference of this corner, or what do you want, the radius of this corner, is like this. It's from here to here, so it's wider. And then when you get here, this is a very steep angle like this. And the circumference, is, the radius is like this. So you have a lot of material that wants to bunch up right in this area right here. So you have to kind of manipulate it out towards the edge. Um, and so just take your time. It is easy to work with. Um, and if you're doing it, you want to definitely do it in the shade on a day that's, you know, around anywhere between uh, 70 to 80 degrees it's hotter than that today so I'm under a I'm under a tarp and uh, so you want to definitely make sure that you are not in the direct sunlight that you are in a shade and just take your time it took me my wife said it probably took me about 45 minutes to do this first one and um, then I did this one uh, the outside and it took me probably maybe 30 minutes to do it and I think I did a lot better on it and then I lowered the tailgate and I did this one uh, uh, not the tailgate the trunk and I did this one and I tried to make sure that my two where my two uh, things line up where I've got them pretty lined up I think I'm pretty close and I'm gonna try to do the same thing over here Another thing that I did is um, figured out to cut off a bunch of the material I don't need. One, because it leaves me some material to be able to do some stuff. Because you see right here, I've got this big, huge piece of material. And I don't need all of that. If you look at the back of it, I need at the most like three squares, which I think is six inches. So I need at the most like three squares. And then if you go... You know, you want to you want it to go over about an inch, and so if you come back this way, coming over about an inch, 
I need about um, eight. So three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So three by eight is about what I need to do what I need to do. And um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, I only need three by seven because this hangs over. I'll show it in a minute. It hangs over quite a bit. So what that does is that ends up saving me a piece that's like this and saving me a piece that's like this. And that's, you know, I could do these. I didn't get a kit to do these. These are just reflective markers on the back. I've already done my side markers on the side, but these are just reflective markers on the back. So I'm gonna use some of this material to cover those. I'm gonna cut it down to where it almost fits it and then I'm just gonna put it down in there and then I'm gonna cut around it and uh, kind of make my own. But this is looking really good. Uh, it's right now it's lit up and um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one down to size I need to cut it down to and go ahead and get it mounted on here. So here we go. So you see after I'm done cutting it, um, if you look on the back and these are two inch blocks, so I'm left with uh, six inches, three blocks by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so what you're gonna see is, is that when you put this up here, it, I get my overhang over here to this side, and this is coming way down beyond where over here, where I'm going to, you just basically come off this lip right here, just maybe an eighth inch off that lip. And um, so, and, and so I, you want to make sure you also have it turned the right way. So I'm going to put this a little bit down. And if you look, you can see the headlight through it. I've not took the back off. You can see the tail light through it, but it gives you the opportunity to be able to line up. You can put it over on this a little bit. And I don't press it down on it, but I just put it over it. And then I can line it up coming the other way. And you see, I'm going to have plenty of overhang up here. Now, I will admit, don't forget to clean. I've not cleaned yet. Well, I will admit that on the um, on the first one that I did, I used the tape, and um, I think it's okay. Um, I didn't on the one that I did over here, on the very far end over here. I forgot to put the tape down, and I had to use my Exacto blade to cut. And I didn't put too much pressure because I didn't want to cut into this material. But I, did, I just did it enough to almost score it, and then it just kind of peeled off, and I didn't have these little puckers along the, uh, the end where it peels it up, it kind of puckers it. And so I put the tape down on this one, and you can see right in this area right here where it kind of, it puckers. And I don't, you probably can't see that really well. I'll show it later at the end of the video. But it puckers there. And I really don't like that. I don't like that look. I'm gonna try to work that out some more with my fingers. Um, you know, like I said, come back and heat it up and work that more with my fingers. But I'm not going to use the tape on this one this time. I'm going to do this one again the way that I did the first one. I'm going to do it with just putting it down and then using the X-Acto blade to cut around it. So I sped this procedure up a little bit and you can still see the overall technique that I'm using. It's just taking your time and working the material, working, like I said, a lot of people, they suggested that you start from the center. Me, I kind of started from the edge because I wanted to line up my honeycomb. Some people suggest that you use the cutting tape and I did both. Uh, I used cutting tape and on some I used the X-Acto blade just enough to barely cut the material and I think that the uh, the material puckered less with cutting it with the X-Acto blade and you just barely have to apply enough pressure to cut the material. I push it down really good and then I just take the X-Acto blade and cut around where the tail light rolls over to the black. I just took my time and did it that way. And then I pressed the ends down and used the heat gun to set the material. That's another thing that you have to do is you have to 
when you're done, you set the material with the heat gun. You uh, heat it up to a certain temperature, 200 degrees or so, and it helps to set it uh, and adhere it to the to the tail light to the plastic. And this is a like I said, I got more comfortable as I did it. I got more comfortable. I took it took me 45 minutes to do the first one, and I probably did the last one in 15 minutes. I think I did the second and the third one in 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and then the last one I did in just a very little amount of time. And I had material left over, so I was able to also do the uh, the reflectors, which I'm going to show at the end of this video. key to doing all this is just taking your time, working with the material, keeping the material warm, and uh, keeping it heated up, not overstretching it, and just taking your time, pulling it back a little bit if you need to, um, if you need to rework some things, and just take your time. Be patient. I've never done this uh, before, and uh, I didn't feel like I was a pro by the time I was done, by no means, but I'm proud of it. I show this off. I like the I like the look that it gave the car. I show this off a lot whenever I go to shows and whenever I go to uh, on car rides or things like that with uh, clubs that we're in. I show it off, and I, I love the way that it turned out. So now that I'm done with those with the tail lights. Let me show you real quick how to do the reflectors. All right, there's really no rhyme or reason to these. Um, I had some extra material left over um, when I cut the uh, other ones down. This is the I'd, I'd pulled it off, and then I, after I trimmed it, I had this material left over. So I'm going to use these two pieces here, this piece off. Um, this sheet, where is it? Right there. That piece off that sheet, and a bigger piece above it, a couple bigger pieces in the trunk. I'm going to use this one, and um, I'm just going to put it on there to where maybe it's two honeycombs or full honeycomb in the middle. Maybe a honeycomb is running down the middle of it. And then I'm just going to trim around it the best I can. And um, See how it looks. If it doesn't look good, I'll pull it off. They actually make a kit for this. Lux does. But I'm going to see if I can use, so if I can be resourceful, and if I can use some of this leftover material. Got a little bit of material there, but it's not big enough. But yeah, see if I can use some of this leftover material and um, make this look halfway decent. Otherwise, I'll order the kit. It's like 20 bucks. This kit, um, you get a, a yard. It's almost like two feet wide by a yard um, long. Three feet by two feet. And I showed earlier how you cut it down. Cut it basically in the middle and then cut it in half. So cut it in half and then cut it in half. And even then, you have a little bit that you can trim off. This is for the 2020 Challenger. I don't know about for 
other Challengers or other vehicles, but this is specifically a 2020 Challenger. Um, so you just maybe, just like I said, measure, measure three times, cut once. All right. So I want to try to, I don't know how well you can see this, but there is, there's not really a center because when you're going the center across here, it's off here. And when you're going the center across here, it's off here. So I think what I, it's, it's a honeycomb. So what I think I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make this be near the top and the bottom and try to have the line that's going every other one across be in the middle. I may have to get down on the floor on the ground to do this. Um, I'm up in a chair and I'd rather be a little closer. Get down on the ground. According to this, I've got eight minutes left, so let's see if I can do it in eight minutes. These don't light up, so I guess it don't really matter. I guess I can just put it on here on second thought because they don't light up. So um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna black them. Whoops, I'm not far I'm not, not over far enough. Make sure that you're centered. As well as you can be. Get your light covered. So what I'm gonna do, since this is not made for this. I'm going to go ahead and put it down on the put down on the lens the best I can and then I'm going to cut it with the exacto blade that Lux so graciously provides and then I'll probably have to work out some some ripples but I don't know, like I said this is just trying seeing if I can make something that looks halfway decent not pull it out didn't cost me anything extra anyway so looks like crap Ahead and trim this along this top edge here. I 
because I know I don't need that. Yeah, that goes in there pretty well, I think. And I'm going to use this blade to cut along the top. And then they have that this uh, tool here, and you can use it to work the edges down in there. Wow, this is turning out a lot better than I thought it was going to, honestly. I thought it was going to be a, you know, look like I did it. <laughs> This is actually turning out really good. And this thing bends so you can get in those corners. Wow. That looks pretty sharp. Says I. I do say so myself. Cool little thing about right here. Y'all don't know if you can see it, but it says Mopar. It's kind of molded in. So now that I've got that done, Got about three minutes left on my SD card here. Go and heat this up. It's supposed to heat it up to about 200 degrees to get it to release the memory it has and take on new memory. I suppose if I got heated up to 200 degrees, I'd release what memory I had too. Boop, boop, boop. Oh yeah, see, you press that, man, yeah, see, it really comes out now. Yeah, it presses right down on there with your finger. So I'm not, I want you to see this. i bring this in here. I'm going to tripod here, so. See that there, it says Mopar. I mean, it's so down on it, you can see what it says. SAE Mopar, with the little Mopar logo. So, so we got the blacked out up top, and this blacked out down here, and uh, man, I think that looks, I think that looks really sharp. And I'm a hot mess out here in this 93 degree weather. <laughs> 93 degree weather is out here and I am a hot mess. I'm under my tarp out here, my easy up. And just enjoying a day off out here working on the car. And doing this and yeah, having fun. Alright guys, here is the back of the car. This is the finished product. This is what it looks like up close. And this is what the um, reflectors look like and it's just it's just awesome it's just it turned out really so good and this footage that you're looking at is actually a few months down the road from me um, applying it so you see that it is still just it's beautiful it's v stuck very well I love it I definitely recommend Lux when it comes to wraps for your headlights, for your tail lights, for side markers or things like that. I definitely recommend Lux wraps. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching for another Challenger video. Thank you to my Patreons, and I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos, more Challenger videos uh, in the future. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you.